the old word microhistory came to, to my mind as I was reading these, so I was really happy to hear it mentioned up there. We had the Prescott capture. Um, we had Michael talking about the, the local level. We had the Shoemaker family. And then we just had Aaron talking about the people who've been left out, and we need individual stories. So I just I want to start out by asking uh, the panelists if any of them would like to, to comment on that, or, or please think of a way to comment to your other panelists on it, and then we'll open it up to the audience. Sure, well, well, jump in. I, I will say, I mean, I, I, I've been talking to a couple of people outside of the formal sessions, and I think what's becoming clear is that, you know, wherever we look at the local level, at the micro level, uh, the war is a very conflicted, it's a very messy place, it's a very, you know, divided place. And yet, we still struggle to present anything other than a fairly simplistic national narrative throughout this period. But as, as one, of the, one of the audience last night, whose name I forgot now, uh, said, you know, every time we go back into the archives, we, it just becomes messy again. And I, you know, we, I, think we, I think we've got a lot of work to do to kind of turn that messiness outward and to, and to, and to make the revolution, make our courses on the revolution, because I struggle with this as well, make our courses on the revolution messy yet coherent. <laughs> and, and not just in a way we say, well, here's the main story about politics and the, and the founding of the Constitution, and then there are women, and then there are blacks, and they're loyalists. Uh, we, we, need to true, we need to make a kind of an, a, a, a much more coherent central narrative out of the, mess, out of the messiness. Mm 